I want to relate to you a story. When we came back after lockdown, um, my classes, classrooms were all over the school. So we had to travel from one end of the school to the other. And on one occasion, I was late to my class. And when I arrived, I apologized. I said to the class, I'm sorry I was late because I had to dismiss my class that I was coming from and travel all the way over to you on the other side of the school. And it took me a while to log onto the computer and set myself up for the lesson that I was about to teach. And one of the people said something which put a smile on my face. He said to me, sir, next time that we arrive late to your lessons or any teacher's lessons, please remember that we also have to travel from one end of the school to the other end of the school. And um, this made me laugh because, um, you know, it was quite funny. I found the roles had reversed a little bit and I was able to sort of appreciate the challenges that they went through. But it also made me reflect. It made me reflect upon how often we don't have the luxury or we don't have the means to fully walk in your shoes, you students. And we are facing some very, very difficult times at the moment. And in this video, the aim is to go through some of the challenges that a lot of you have been facing with your mental well-being and your mental health due to the lockdown that we have been facing in the UK and also students all around the world. Now, the first lockdown that happened in March had a detrimental effect on the mental well-being of young people and adults everywhere. And any subsequent lockdowns or any disruption to our learning, our education system is going to just compound upon these problems that we face. I want to share with you some of the personal accounts that some of the students um, have told me about. Perhaps you can relate to some of these things, maybe one or more of these things. We have been overloaded with work. There has not been enough time to recover. It is so overwhelming right now. All the work that we have missed, lots of us haven't even caught up with it. Then we began school in September and we carried on with new stuff. I'm worried how I will manage to catch up on all the old stuff by myself. Another student. I was just starting to get the hang of maths in year 10. I even began enjoying maths lessons. And I felt really, really confident in the subject. Then schools closed for six months. I came back and I felt that I didn't know anything anymore. I lost my confidence and I felt so confused all again. I was back to square one and my GCSE exams were this year. I am really worried about my future now and the grades that I will get. Another student. If exams are cancelled again and our grades are predicted from mock exams, then I'm worried because a lot of people don't always put full effort into mock exams. And they would have done better if they took the real exams. The government doesn't ask us how we feel. They just expect us to be able to fit in all the work and just do the exams. The next account that I will share with you is something that we don't always see when we are in school. I hated lockdown. School was my escape because things are really difficult at home sometimes. These lockdowns mean that I'm always at home and I can't go out. School was the only time sometimes when I could actually go out and be free. And finally, the last student, I am so uncertain about the future. The unexpected is already happening. Many university students from last year chose a deferred entry to university and they took a gap year because of COVID-19. This will only increase the demand that people will have for courses because two-year groups will be now competing for the same courses. Now, these things, these accounts that you've just heard may be something that you can relate to. And much more than this, we are going to look at some of the things that you can do to help you overcome some of the mental barriers that are causing and having a negative impact on your well-being. Now, I am not an expert on mental health. However, I have been a teacher for over 14 years now, and I have had the privilege of taking two form groups and seeing them mature and develop from the ages of 11 all the way to 19. So some of the problems and challenges that young people face, I had to deal with, and I hope to share this with you in this video. Before we begin, I need you to understand one thing. Despite everything that is happening around us, despite 
all these problems that we are facing, we need to acknowledge that we can only have control over some things. We can't control the situation. We ourselves cannot make problems that are affecting everybody go away. So understand that, number one. Our control is on the things that we can control in our immediate lives. However, that doesn't mean that we just let things happen to us and not do things about it. Now, our situation is very, very unique to us. Um, you know, perhaps you have friends, they may be um, doing okay and, and they may be recovering quite well from all this. Um, don't compare yourself to anyone, okay? You are you, you have your own weaknesses, you have your own strengths. So keep that in your mind and keep yourself in focus as we go through this. So how do you improve your happiness and your self-confidence? Remember, you are not just some exam number, some candidate number. You are a person, you are an individual. Yes, you are part of a school, but that school is a part of your life. That education is a part of your life. It is a part of your future. It is a part of something that will make you and shape you the adult of the future. So keep that in your mind, number one. Work on small goals and small achievements rather than the entire task. Worrying about the whole thing there isn't gonna help you in any shape, way or form. Yes, you may have fallen behind on this subject, which is very, very difficult for you. But you know what? You can't do all of that in one night or even a week, okay? So start focusing on smaller goals. You know, perhaps work a few chapters. You know, you know maybe you've got seven or eight chapters to complete. Spend the next two weeks on one chapter. Achieve that, celebrate that, and move on to the next one. Making yourself a routine and sticking to this. Very, very important. In fact, this piece of advice was shared with me by one of the students that I teach. They told me that it was one evening during the lockdown period that they thought to themselves, oh my God, what is happening? And they had their head in their hand. They started thinking deeply about where things are going. And they became so determined that they made themselves this routine. They made themselves this timetable and they promised themselves that they will start sticking to that timetable no matter what is happening. And they continued that. That student, I can tell you, is a much, much more confident student in class, in school because they stuck to this routine and they kept at it. So make yourself a routine, make yourself, give yourself some goals. So in the routine that you make, ask yourself, how many hours will you dedicate to your goals of covering this chapter or this topic? Whatever you make, make sure that you have a good balance of old material and the new material that you are learning. So whatever you commit to, make sure you stick with it. Also recognize that you have your own pace. So if you are hearing about other students who are getting things done really, really quickly, ignore that because you are working at your pace that you are comfortable with. However, don't let that you know, be an excuse not to push yourself. Keep pushing yourself. Also start to build up a tolerance. In the first few days, in the first few weeks, things may be quite difficult. You know, you may not be used to sitting at home covering all this old topic. You may feel as though Okay, give yourself a treat, acknowledge it, acknowledge, you know what, I've covered chapter one now, and let that motivate you as you go on and do the next few chapters, as you go on and do the next subject. Try to exercise frequently. If you're already exercising, fantastic, continue that. If you're not, start. Perhaps, you know, you can start off with a jog every morning for 20 minutes. Um, and if you don't fancy jogging, maybe go to the park and do some squats, some burpees, some push-ups, anything to stimulate yourself, to stimulate chemicals. There's a uh, chemical called endorphins, which are released, and these chemicals, you know, they help relieve you from pain, they help relieve you from stress, it, you know, it gives you a good feeling in your body, it makes you more confident. So exercise, get that into your routine, make sure you continue it. If not just for this period, just for your own well-being and your own health benefits. Finally, Try to bring other elements into your life. If your life is only about school and education and that's it and COVID and, you know, you haven't got much else to look 
forward to and to sort of focus on. You know, sometimes you need to stop focusing on one thing and focus on something else. So, I don't know, whatever it is, you know, bring something into your life. Finally, try to bring other elements into your life. Just thinking about school and education and COVID, you know, it can get quite depressing. You know, I have this thing where I take five minutes out of my life um, every single day and I just block everything else out and I just focus on myself. A bit like meditation, if you like. And I just start thinking about me, where I'm going in life, um, what kind of problems I'm facing. And this just makes me just forget about my problems for five minutes. And it just makes me feel so much better afterwards. So practice things like this in your life, where you just lock yourself out from everything, all thoughts, and you just focus on yourself. You deserve that. Think about yourself. Think about your goals. Think about those things. And when you are thinking about those things, wisdom will come to you. Guidance will come to you. And hopefully you'll feel better about these situations. And finally, as we come to the end of this video, you have lots of good people around you. You just have to seek them and find them. They could be your parents. They could be older brothers and sisters. They could be other adults that you trust. They could even be one of your friends who has a mature head on their shoulders. Find them, tell them about your problems, share with them your worries. There are also many organizations that you can contact um, and I'll leave um, a list of them over here. So if you want to reach out to them, you can speak to professionals um, about various things that may be upsetting you. And I want to leave you with this one last thing. Remember, every problem in our lives is a gift. Without these gifts, we wouldn't grow. Goodbye and see you in the next video.